Welcome everybody to part two of the four part portrait demonstration set of videos. Today I'm going to be focusing on the face. Um, I've made a small adjustment to the body which you will see in the photograph that Judy will put on the website at the end of this video and I've just made the hand a bit smaller. I've been looking at different measurements on the face. Um, possibly I need to lower the beard a little bit and uh, work on the nose a little bit to refine the shape and the shape of the head. So far I'm okay with it. I'm going to be starting to build layers on top of the initial layers that I've worked. I have here my palette that I've mixed. Um, the colours are very similar to last week but I've made a few more different light versions of um, the couple that I had last week. So all of these are a combination of cadmium red deep up here, yellow ochre and white and I've added hints of blue to make a kind of a purple skin tone and hints of green if I'm going a little bit more ochre just to cool it down a little bit because I find that the red and the yellow ochre and the white are a little bit too hot. I've got my dark colours here. This is a black that I mix with ultramarine blue, um, olive green and cadmium red deep and that will go for the hair and then I've got the olive green and cadmium red deep mix on its own for the darker areas of the skin. I'll be mixing between these, um, taking little bits of one, adding a bit of yellow ochre maybe or a little bit of red to them as I go but I'll be talking about that. So to begin the brush I'm using this week is my filbert. And I'll be mostly using that and maybe a little bit of a smaller brush to work around the eyes. So I'll see where I go with it. So looking at it, I think I need to work colours into the dark areas. I'm quite happy with my tonal values so far. I might be starting to put a little bit of the background colour in so I can see how the face is going to look up against the background. What I'll probably do with the background is put in a darker colour of the green and then work the lighter colours on top of it and I'll adjust as I go. To begin I'm going to start working the darker tone of values around this area of the face and possibly the side of the nose and into the beard. I'll probably be adding a bit of beard and I might start to work the features. It depends how I go. I want to work the ear a little bit more and go darker in the hair and as I said maybe redraw the nose shape with a background colour. So I'm going into my dark colours and I'm just building up colour again, that's too dark. I'm going to go in with a deep purple red. So this colour that I'm putting on is the ultramarine, cadmium red deep, yellow ochre and white. It goes paler around the edge of that shadow. So I'm going to put in a little bit of a paler red and it's starting to look a little bit more solid because this is the second layer. Within that shadow there is a slight area of light. That's too light. Go a little bit darker. I'm pushing it on thicker and I've also mixed a little bit of um, linseed oil into the um, paint. Whereas last week I was working mainly with water. This is a little bit lighter. And the light area goes over here. Now around the eyes is a little bit more pink, so I've just mixed some of my paler colour and put a hint of pink into it. And I'm just filling that in a little bit more. There is also a slight shadow in here. With something like this, the more you look, the more you see. You have to look at very detail, the detail in all the small areas. So by around the back of the eye, it's a bit paler than what I've got. I'm just stroking it in and it's blending into the paint that I've already put on. I think that needs to have a little bit of a paler colour into it. That's a bit warm. I'm going to add a little bit of blue into my pale colour. like that and I'm just stroking it on and this is what I like about the film that it covers an area but you get these soft edges um, and also over the top here it's a lot lighter and it is quite cool. So I'm just going over that a little bit more 
on the front because his forehead is very pale and I'm going to redraw it because it goes out slightly there and then drops down. If I feel that I've done that too severely, then I can, when I put the hair in, then I can uh, redraw again. And it swoops down into his rather marvellous eyebrow. So the shape of the eyebrow goes up a little bit there. Within the eyebrow over on this side, you can see a bit of a paler colour. However, it's not as pale as this, so I'm just going to put a little bit in there. That's too pale. Take some more darker on my brush. Too dark. And mid colour, that's better. So I'll put the eyebrow over that again. Over here, you have a slight paler area. And then you have a bit of a shadow that runs down there. I'm not worrying about being too exact because um, I like the expression in the paint and the way I use it rather than exact lightness. We go into here a little bit more. So I'm just covering what I did last week and adjusting tonal values a little bit lighter down the back there of where the eyebrow drops down. Some people prefer to work with thicker paint and uh, more of a rough technique. I used to be quite a blender, but I've worked my way out of that. I much prefer to have a little bit of painterliness, but I still do tend to blend a little bit more than other people. Whatever your style, it'll come out in your painting. Go a little bit lighter down the side of the nose. This is where I can redraw the nose a little bit. That's actually too warm. So I'm going to cool that down with a little spot of ultramarine into my pale colour and a little bit of white to change that. That's a bit better. And that light does go around the bottom of the nose. And again, if I don't get accuracy straight away. I'm still not worried because I'll be working with my smaller brushes as I go later on to get details. That light comes down the side of the moustache here but it goes a little bit darker just into where the moustache starts. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tone into there. I might blend that a little bit. So I just blend by stroking it very gently, very lightly. It does go down here a little bit, but it's a little bit darker. So I'll put that in, I'll put the moustache over that probably. And also on the other side, here, I have to cover that up because if you remember from last week, I moved the moustache forward over that way to the left. So I'm just putting in a little bit of the tonal value. Within the beard here, it's a little bit lighter and going over here it's a little bit of light as well I'm not going to go as light as that I'm going to take a darker mix and work in here a little bit and it's a bit more subtle there's a lot of texture in here because of his moustache his beard And I'm going to go in with that cheek colour again, the darker colour, just into there. Cover up that little bit of dark. So a little bit of blending. At the moment he looks like he's got a bit of a bruise, but that is quite a shadow in that area. I'm going to go a little bit lighter over here. So if you're working with acrylic, unfortunately, you have to keep the paint wet if you want to do this kind of blending. But if you work thickly enough, it does behave a bit like oils. Whereas with oils, I can come back to this area and it'll still be wet and I can play with it. Whereas acrylic, you've had it, you've got to remix the colours and put them on again and then blend them into each other. If you want that kind of effect, I'm going to put in a little bit of this eyebrow. 
it's quite light down here compared with at the front that's a little bit dark so I'm using my um, filbert brush sideways and just tweaking the paint as I put it on so within here if you can notice I'm just working my way around the whole face wherever I feel like going I don't really have a system I just go where I feel um, uh, adjustments need making and eventually it all comes together so it's lighter under the eyebrow so I'm going to put in a little bit and it's quite warm actually a little bit of this paler color again that might be too pale so I'm going to put in a little bit of something dark oh no not that a bit of darker in with it that was a mistake sorry so going over that that's better Wipe that off on the palette and what I will do is take a thicker color and just work over there so I've covered it up basically and I'm going to put the eyelid in now the eyelid is cool eyelids are usually cool they have a hint of blue in them very often so I'm going to put that in And at the side, this side of the eye, the eyelid goes darker. So I'm going to put a hint of a little bit of a purplish colour in there, like that. My eye is too wide, so what I'll be doing is trimming it when I put the eyelashes on, because his eyelashes are quite wide, so I'll, I'll be hiding some of that eye. I'm not going to do the eye just yet. I'm going to work underneath it and redraw because it's too flat. The angle I've noticed drops down much more, so it should maybe more like that. And I'm going to go over that with a little bit of a pink colour. That's a bit better. And going into this area here, I've got a greenish shadow that I put in last week and I still like that. I could possibly leave that. I think I will. However, going down the nose, I'm going to lighten it a little bit because it's a little bit dark and a bit severe. So I'm going to go over the top of that. And there's a shadow line that drops down at the front of the eye. And also within here, I'm going to use my paler pink colour to lighten there. Sorry. So I've got his nose quite dark. Um, so I'm going to be lightening areas of that. I might use a smaller brush for that. I'm getting more happy with the shape of the nose. There's a lo lovely little bit of reflected light that goes on in the corner of the nose. So I'm going to be putting that in. I'm going to just work this a little bit more. I'm going to put in a greenish flesh colour. Because I want the green of the background to come through into the foreground, into the figure. And take that green down there. So a little bit of artistic license going on here. I'm going to put a little hint of green into this area um, and I think probably into the beard a bit even though I haven't got much green in there you can use your fingers if you want to smooth things off a bit so going back to over this area I'm going to have a look at that lip I think I'll put some of this green into the top lip that top lip I think was a little bit high so I've covered up the line I made and when I paint the bottom lip I will redraw that however there is a little bit of red within the line so I'll be putting that in as well so I'm going to swap to a smaller brush now which is my graduate brush I went to the shop yesterday and was shocked to see that they're £2.75 instead of £2.25 so better get your paint brushes in quick because I think the prices are going up so working on the nose, um, I'm going to lighten the areas within here. There is a purple hint down here, so I'm going much lighter that area. 
it's much paler going up just in here. And also in the bridge of the nose, it's much paler. So I've mixed a little bit of white into my pale color. Now the edge of his nose, I can redraw, but because I'll be putting some background in, I don't have to worry too much about it being perfect because I will redraw with the background green. There's a bit of a light on there. Um, going into the end of his nose, we have, it's paler here. Um, it's quite pink, purple pink underneath. So I'm going to put that in. And he's got a little bit of a light area going over the nostril. My nostril, I think, is not quite right. So I'm going to adjust just from the top edge. It might be too pale, although his nose is quite pale. And there is a, a really nice bit of light that runs underneath as well, under the nostril and also under the nose and into the moustache. So I'm looking at how dark this area is on the nose. So I'm going to go in with a bit of purple color because there is quite a dark bit in there. But then it goes light on top of the side flap of the nose. I'm going to make that a bit warmer. over there. Dropping down into the light here. And it goes slightly up there. It's much paler underneath the nose. I'm going to put that pale line on. Going to blend that and put a little bit of a mid color in it, um, just in here, just over what I did last week. And that drops slowly into there. So it's all about observation. It's about closely monitoring color shapes, um, tonal values. And also I tend to stand back and look at it as a whole because sometimes if I'm working the nose, I'll suddenly think, is it the right size or um, have I made it bigger or smaller? And you have to keep standing back to check your sizings because if you don't, you could end up with a beautifully painted nose and you've actually made it a little bit too big. I'm going to go and blend that line a little bit. That stops down there. There's actually a little bit of a pale light just in here on the corner of the eye and I'll just work that a little bit so I'm going to what I tend to do when I'm painting if I want to blend a bit is I'll find a bit of board and I'll just get the paint off my brush so there's very little on it and then my brush is reasonably clean just to do a little bit of blending and to blend um, I'll put two colours together in the background. I'm going to use my black and um, a red. The temptation is to blend, to pull one colour into another. But what you tend to get is uh, the dragging of the colour and you don't actually get a nice blended line. So what I tend to do is, and I'll make that red a bit brighter, I put the colours next to each other and then I'll very gently, I'll clean off my brush a little bit first on my palette and then I'll very gently stroke down that way and that way I get a blend. If you want to work quickly, you might pull the red into the black and the black into the red a little bit using... Uh, diagonal strokes and then stroke across barely touching the surface and you get a really beautiful blend so that's the way I tend to blend so going back to my head it's a little bit lighter within here 
and when I'm putting on some of these marks I'm barely touching the surface because I don't want to put a lot of paint on I just want a little a little mark so back to the nose I think I'm going to blend a little bit within here actually there's a bluish light so in the light area here I'm going to put a hint of blue that's a little bit too pale so I'll mix a pale colour into that blue colour that I put on just put that over it like that and that dark shadow line actually comes across but I've made it very wide so I'm just going to go over some of this shadow make it lighter I'm starting to work in a little bit more detail adjusting the angle of that shadow which drops into there and I think that shadow that I've got here should come over a little bit into that lighter area to leave room for more of a highlight on the edge over here so I'll pull that in a little bit I'm going to put more of a highlight on the edge of the nose and I want it to be a bit cool so I'm going to put into my pale flesh colour I'm going to put a hint of blue and that comes over there and you've got a little bit of a bump here going up to there now this light area here comes in a little bit stronger around the nose and I've made this a little bit too warm and a little bit too low so I'm going to take my dark colour and just redraw into there that shape there so you can see I am covering that initial dark colour that I use because I think that it's a bit too dark I can put a little bit in here so as I'm putting more detail in I'm touching the surface more lightly with my brush and blend down there a bit um, not got my highlights in yet I usually save those till a bit later and inside his nose I can see a hint of red so I'm going to take just a little bit of red on my brush and go over where the dark area is I've done that rather a lot so I'm going to go into a dark colour and just put in the corner there and the dark shadow within the nostril again now what happens with the skin underneath is it kind of hooks up and goes into the nostril so I need to do that because at the moment his nostril doesn't look connected to the flesh around the nose so going pulling the pail up into there a little bit and so the nostril is starting to look as if it's attached and a little bit softer there's a little bit of light here that needs to drop down a bit I will be going lighter with that um, what I'll probably do is later on I'll take a finer brush and just make sure that that nostril is the right shape so looking at it again I think I will do a little bit of blending just on here so I'm not particularly showing you my palette as I'm mixing at the moment what I'll probably do next week is when I start to work more details and then I will be showing my palette and how I mix the colors to put detail on because it's more subtle so you, you're a bit less subtle when you first start the painting and then as you start to work colors in and work the finer details you do get more subtle and you do try to get more accuracy as well so I'm just softening a lot of this area around here I don't want it too soft because if I get it too soft um, it, it will look plastic take a little bit of a dark color on my brush just work that in 
And what I've been doing is putting my little finger into this area here, which has roughened it up. But I actually don't mind that because there's a bit more texture going on. But uh, looking at that, I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow in here. And I think I'm going to start to work around the eye and then I'm going to work the beard and the moustache a little bit more. So around the eye, I'm going to put some red into the crease of the eye above the eyelid just to like liven it up a little bit and make it a little a little warmer and a little bit more um fleshy i've made my eyelid actually quite thick so i'm going to have to shave a bit off because i haven't left room for the eyebrow so thinning it down like that there is this quite dark shadow at the bottom of the eye here which has a hint of red in it so I'll just put that in. I can exaggerate. If I decide that that's too dark, I can go over with a bit of a paler colour. Like that. Now I've got a very thick line over my eyelid and I don't want a thick line. So I'm going to take uh, my pale colour and just thin it. To there. I'm going to put a little bit of my um, green colour that I had into here. And also he does have a shadow just here that I've covered up. I'll put that in again. So it's all about very, very, very careful observation. I can see a line going along there. It's a very very subtle line so I don't want it to be too heavy and there's a shadow that comes out of the eye here I've done that too dark so I'll take what's on my brush mix it with a paler color and just go over the top a little bit and in the corner of the eye I'm going to cover those lines that I put in because it's quite soft it's mainly shadow and put a bit of shadow into there to cover that dark line. So I've softened that. I think I need to go a little bit lighter into the corner of the eye. So just here and over here. And yep, stepping back and looking, I think the going back to his nose, the I'm going to include a little bit of a nice vermilion red over here to give it a bit of life. But that shadow does come forward a little bit more than I've got it. And I've covered up my vermilion, so I'm going to put some more on. That might be a little bit too much. So I think I'll lighten this here and take a little bit off. Goes a bit lighter up here as well. Right, I'm going to sharpen this line here. And then also it's much lighter here, but there is a very fine line that runs down into the eyelashes. So I'm going to put that in. Just place my flat brush there and there it is. That's what I was looking for. Now I'm looking at the position of the skin above the eye and I'm thinking about my eyelid and where it ends. And I think the skin above it comes forward. A little bit from I say forward to the left over the eye I think it's time I actually started to put the eye in a little bit so it's quite a dark gray at the moment so I'm gonna go over that a bit I think my shape is reasonably good um, his eyes from the side there's a slight yellow ochre feel to them I might even put a little hint of green in to reflect the background so I'm just going to put 
the iris in which you can barely see because it's very similar color to the background I'll be altering that when I put the white in there is a shadow shape oops that goes around the eye and down the front of it a little bit where the eyelashes are so I'll change the shape of that and there's also a little bit of eyelash at the bottom however I need to put some of my pale palest color in and just reshape the front of the eye using the corner of my brush because this is a flat brush pull it into that I haven't done anything with this area yet and so I'm starting to look at that I think what happens here is this shadow kind of runs down there a little bit um, I'm going to stroke that to blend it a bit and then this area is actually very pale all the way around here it's got pale a bit that goes up there so I'm going to go lighter I've made it quite olive at the moment and I think it needs to be a bit cooler all this area here it's a little bit too hot so I'm looking very carefully to see where the light hits so he does have a little bit of a shadow running there but this is a lot lighter and this light area if I squint at it I can see it better it goes up here I need to put a bit more white into that there is a little bit more light going up here which drops down from the eye it goes up there it's a possibility I put this shadow a bit too high or actually this is a little bit long so that might be the problem so if I go in pale on here and this curves down there and I think it's paler down here but I think I need to take this up so that line is a little bit higher and what happens is the light goes around here like that but I think that shadow is a little bit wide that goes down here so I can take some of that off at the edge it's very very subtle all the areas within the light are very similar um, I'm looking at this area as a whole as being much lighter to this area here but within this area if you it's a temptation to go very dark with the shadow areas but there's barely anything there in the way of shadow so I'm not going to be putting on heavy shadows I'm going to keep it light I'm going to make this a bit paler And it goes down there and then actually all this area is paler than what I've got it and the light goes up to there and I think this area is a bit oh I've put some dark on accidentally picked that up not to worry I'm go over that or pull it off with my brush and take the lighter color over and down a bit mm -hmm. happy with that so going over to the other side I go back and two I notice this is a little bit too dark so I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit it's definitely a nice paler area there um, there's also within the area in front of the ear there is also a greenish dark color that might be too pale I like the color but it's too pale so I'm going to add a little bit of green into it to darken it down and a hint of red so into here now I'm looking at um, where the beard is here because I have 
got quite a bit of flesh in front of the ear so I just want to fill that in and then I'm going to have to have another look at the measurements over here I think this is too far over to the right the hairline so I'll be moving that in and there's a possibility that the eyebrow is a little bit too far to the right as well so I can move that in so this is all the little adjustments that you make as you work bit of dark hair there and it goes down here and you can see some strokes of the hair so I'm just lightly stroking and I'm getting texture where the hair goes so against the face so this should come in a little bit like that and then it comes around a lot higher up to what I have darker in there like that so I feel that that's actually an improvement to dark into there as well I'm not going to mess with the hair too much because I want to work on the beard a little bit so with the beard I'm just looking for the darker shadows a little bit of darker there this is quite dark but it will lighten up as I go and I'm brushing in the same direction as the bristles I'm going to go in with a paler color to the black that I mix so this is um, olive green deep and the cadmium red deep and I'm just going to make some marks there I'm looking for the shadows there's a darker shadow in there and this goes up here into the side of the face I'm more squinting to see where the light and dark is so I'm going to cover this slightly over here so it disappears into the beard a little bit and just by constantly stroking it I slightly lose that light area and likewise there's this light area here that I don't want it to be so obvious so I'm just going to work that a little bit and I'm going to pull a little bit of light down here and a little bit over there and then it gets darker there is a slight hints of greens under here which I'm going to put in going under there so only really very dark under here it's his hair that's darker I'm not going to worry too much about the edges of the beard because I'll be wanting to put background on before I put the dark color over the top of it and into that down here again all my brush strokes are following the angle of the beard I'm going to go into the moustache area in there just put thicker paint on and also around here there's a hint of um, a grey blue so I'll put some of that it's quite light it's skin coloured so going into the moustache just to change that area a little bit clean my brush off with water because I'm going to put a light colour on top of a dark colour and I've got my brush rather loaded with dark so I wipe it off on tissue and then go back into this very light area here to pull it down a bit. It's quite thick where I put it so I'm just going to pull that down by stroking it like that and this should go into there a little bit more. a bit of a line going down here so I will take that out a bit by pulling some of the paler colour across it like that going down to this area here I can see there's a hint of red under there as well so I'm just going to put some red into that like that there's also a little bit of a red around the eyebrows 
I need to put a little bit more of that nice green from the background in. I think my problem is that because I haven't got the background colour in, which I'm going to do shortly, I'm not thinking in that way. I'm not thinking about the reflected light into the skin. So um, a little bit more green in there. Oh, that's too much green. So I mix yellow ochre with a bit of viridian and a spot of white. I can add a little bit of red if it's too bright a green. And I'm going to put a little bit more green around here, oh, but only very subtly. Up there. There's also a lot of purple in Jose skin, so I've got quite a few different colours going on. Um, yeah, a little bit more green down here. It's too dark. So I'm doing just a little mix of the flesh colour that I had last week to put over that in here. And a little bit maybe into the head. What I'm going to do now, oh, you know what? I'm going to put a bit down there. Oh, he looks very green now. He looks ill. Never mind. We'll change that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of background colour in. I'm going to go quite dark because I'm using, oops, sorry, a bit of uh, camera wobble. I do apologise for my camera wobble. It's not the best setup. But it's quite difficult to get all the, a good close-up when you're trying to paint in front of it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my flat. Um, because a lot of the leaves in the background are, have lots of angles and I'm going to mix with my cadmium yellow light and I shouldn't mix with a brush because all paint ends up in the brush I should mix with a palette knife that's what I'm going to do so taking my yellow over here I'm going to put it oh there's already some viridian over here so a bit more viridian and I don't want it to be well actually it is quite bright I don't want it to be lime so I can add a spot of red to cool it down but I'm going to put a little bit of blue in and that will cool it down well it won't cool it down but it'll darken it and I think it's very vivid but it might be interesting so I'm just going to go with that. So taking up my brush, I need to put a little bit of linseed oil in it because it's too sticky. And I'll put a spot of water as well to get it a bit more runny. Because this is not going to be a final coat. So I'm going to redraw. That's actually too light, so I'm going to put some of my blue in that. Redraw the face a little bit. And you will be able to see the nose come out. I'm not sure how accurate this is. So there's a possibility I have to use flesh colour to draw again the nose back in. And that's the way it goes. So the nose is quite rounded there. And if I drop down into the moustache, like that, there is actually quite a dark colour behind the moustache. Now, the mouth isn't resolved yet. I'm going to be working on that next. The chin is a straight line down there. It doesn't matter if I go over where the chin's going to be. I need to bring the chin out, actually, I've just noticed. And this is what happens when you're doing portraiture. It's about noticing little faults. And just put that around the face and also down the neck there. Now what has happened 
is his face has come out quite nicely but his beard has disappeared however when I put lighter colors on and lighten the beard it will change again so going up into the hair area I'm only putting on one colour. Next week I will be working the background a little bit. I won't work the whole background, just enough for you to see how it will look around the head. And over the hair, because he's got a little bit of hair that comes up in tufts. So I will um, capture that when I do the hair. This way I can look at it and I can see if there are any issues. I think his nose is too pointed. It might actually be turning up a little bit too much, but I'm going to, oops, I've lost my picture on my laptop. Just get that back. I'm going to, mm, I think, curve it down. I think I'm going to have to use a pale color to slightly change the edge of his nose. That's a bit better. As I say, I'm not trying to get a completely accurate likeness. I just want to get feel. So I'm running out of the screen. So I'll just slap on what I've got left and maybe somewhere around the back of the head like that. What I'm going to do now is probably um, I will leave the front of the beard for when I've done the background properly. But I'm going to work a little bit more on the beard, a little bit of shadow into the neck and I think for Chris Elsden I'm going to put an eye in. So I'm going back to smaller brush and I'm going to look at the shape of my eye. I really think that this has to come down a bit more but I've got a lot of paint on there so I can just move it without putting any more on. And this shadow should be a little bit darker. I have got on my palette so many little small mixes now. It's This is when it gets to a really lovely stage because you can go a little bit of that and a little bit of that and you can just put lots of very subtle colours into your um, painting. Whereas when, as you probably remember, when I first started mixing colours, I just mix uh, colours that I can see but don't worry about details and it's the moving between your colours and adding paler bits and toning down with bits of blue or green. Um, that's when you start to get all these subtleties. So back to the face. Um, yes, I was going to work the eye a little bit more. Um, yeah, there's quite a cool area of pale there. So I'm going to take white and blue, mix it into one of my pale colours. Ultramarine blue, by the way. And I'll have to add quite a bit of white to it very pale and if you find that your paint is getting stiff depending on where you're at with your layering if you're on your final layers you can just use a, a bit of linseed oil whereas um, at the moment I'm still using a bit of water that's still not light enough I'm just going to dip my brush into white and go over that so that comes down there and that's actually very white. A bit of blue in there. And wiping off my brush, I'm just going to blend that slightly like that. I've just noticed on the nose that the light area comes back a little bit more. And this area across here goes across a little bit more, a bit paler into here as well. Yup. Within this area here I think it is paler as well. So I'll go in a bit of paler colour there and it goes a little bit paler here, like that. So looking at the back end of the eye, which is what I was doing before I got distracted. A little bit of darker colour in there. And going up here, still slightly darker. 
but I've done the wrong shape so I'm going to pull the pale colour into there like that. Still needs to be paler on the nose but at the moment I'm going to leave that a bit darker there. So I'm going to look at this area here and there are a few lighter bits. There is a kind of a little bit of light that comes down here. That's because the light's hitting his hair. I might put those on afterwards with a smaller brush. So with the beard, you could be here forever trying to do all your um, brush strut, all the hairs. So I'm just looking at shapes. That's too pale. Let's go in a bit of a darker colour. So I'm just looking for the shadow shapes that I can see. That's still too dark. So I'll take my dark beard colour and go over that a little bit and work it in. Like that. It's actually quite dark within this area here, but not as dark as his hair. So I'm thinking of my tonal values. I think the light comes across a little bit more. So I'm going to go lighter over here. And also it is a little bit lighter over this area as well. Like that. So I'm doing lots of little tweaks. You can play around for quite a lot um, of time. I'm the sort of person I do tend to do that. Um, other people will put a few strokes on and they're happy with it. So go with how you feel. Very often uh, you might be trying to get a lot of realistic detail. And oops, sorry, camera shake again. You might be trying to get a lot of detail and then just discover that that's not the way you work, that you prefer it rough without too much um, realism. A bit lighter there and then it goes dark over the top of that. And this is very much heavier. I've got a lot of paint there, so I'm going to leave that. What I'm going to do is work on the hair a bit. So I'm taking my... Um, my black that I made with the ultramarine blue, the um, cadmium red deep and the olive green and I'm putting a little bit of a flesh colour into it because I'm getting a lighter colour here. Because over on this side it is lighter so I can just see the hints of light going on so I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to go dark, oops, just putting in. Going again, once again, with the way the hair falls with my brushwork. So go over that and put in the darker areas. Where the hair goes towards the head, it does go lighter and it goes grey. But I'm going to make it a bit of a blue-grey. So over here, that's too light. better and it's a little bit of a, a blend there to soften it. I think I'm going to have to put in a bit of the flesh tone again over here. That's better. Underneath the hair there there's reflected green. So I'm going to take some of my green and just put a little bit under there. That's probably too much. So I take some of my flesh tone and shave it off a little bit. He does have a little bit of a shadow here going on. 
put some of that in and then a lighter area over the top here I'm going to take a bigger brush and just block in the back of the head again because it's so dark I'm going to put that against my ear I'm going to work the ear a little bit oh I'm going to put in the eye for Chris I'd forgotten so I might leave the ear till next week and put the eye in. The flesh underneath the back of the neck is darker than I've got. So I'm going to go a lot darker in there. I've just dipped into my Cadmium Red Deep and uh, Olive Green Mix and I'm putting that in. It is very, very dark actually down the back of the neck and that's what sends him forward. In, I also realise that my neck should turn there could be wrong i'm just going to check that with the level of the chin and yes actually that's a change of height for that area going into seeing as i'm in the area to the neck i think that should be a bit red in there we've got a lighter color going down here and you've got an even lighter area just in here it's already there from last week okay and what happens is actually this area here is a lot darker so I'm going to make the adjustment under the ear and that will send the ear forward I'm actually using my old filbert it's a really bad idea where you're trying to do a bit of refinement. I picked that up out of the water instead of using my new filbert. So there's my new filbert. And going back to where I was, there is an area of light that drops down from the ear just into there. A very subtle little bit of light. And then the... Um, area under here is darker and then this bit of beard goes into here like that a bit more I'm going to put a bit more flesh color down here in front of the ear so I'm altering all the time repainting um, and adjusting Right, so going to the ear, I'm going to leave the ear till next week, I'm going to work on the lips a bit more and I'm going to work on the eye, um, see where we get. So I've actually put the iris colour in, I'm going to a smaller brush and I'm going to put in a paler colour for the eye. I'm mixing a little bit of flesh tint with blue and ultramarine, ultramarine blue and white. And I'm going to put, I'm trying not to put my my little finger on my paint that I've got there. So it does actually go very light down here. So this, that's too flesh coloured. I'm going to go in with blue. I don't want the eye white looking like the flesh. So I'm going to pause for a second and put some more white out because I've run out. Okay, got my white. I'm going to mix that into a blue and put that in. So where the eye, the white of the eye touches the skin of the, of the lower lid, um, there isn't really much definition. You can't really see the difference in the colour too much. Oops, sorry, camera shake again. Keep kicking the tripod. My apologies. I'm going to now put in the iris, um, which is, yeah, that's quite a nice colour. I think also in front of that, I think the iris comes forward a little bit too much still. So I'm going to have to go into this skin here and chop a bit of it off. 
like that and um, put in a highlight into the iris and then I'm going to put a pupil in so it is a little bit lighter oops too much let's take some of my yellow ochre mixture calm that down a bit so now I've got my rigger which I'm going to put the pupil in with so I want my paint reasonably runny I'm adding linseed oil to the um, black that I've got and looking very carefully where the eye is because if you get the pupil wrong it's not going to look right you do have to get the angle correct now the pupil because we're looking sideways on the pupil is actually at the back of the eye if you look at people sideways on and look at their eyes you'll see that the pupil sits behind the iris there's quite um, a lot of iris in front of the eye so that's okay we'd have to work some fine detail on this eye I think and while I've got my rigger although I don't tend to use the rigger too much because you can end up fiddling I'm just going to put in a little bit of a oops with my finger a little bit of a shadow here you can just see a little bit of eyelash color going on there and then I don't want to use my rigger to do the eye the eyelashes on top because I'll end up doing little tiny fine lines I just want to make a shadow line he's got quite long eyelashes actually so what happens is the there's a shadow at the bottom and an eyelash comes across there and then it goes up it might be too black actually it's a little bit harsh looking and it's quite solid there and then take chop off a little bit of this eye And the shadow goes down to there so I need to put a little bit of more of a shadow there I think my pupil is in it's a little bit big so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put some white for the highlight and I might shave my pupil a little tiny bit so this might be too white I'm going to take a bit of gray into it and put that in there actually got the angle of where he's looking slightly wrong because on the bottom of the eye bit more of a slope around the iris so actually that has changed the direction of the eye I'm going to wipe off my brush to get the colour off then I'm going to use some linseed oil in my dark colour and just drag the lashes around a little bit to soften them is a little bit flatter over the top of the eye and the eyebrow is way too thin so that needs to be higher up here I'm not going to go in with black as I say it's too hard I'm going to go in with a grey because it does look slightly grey so a little bit drops into there so it actually should be a bit more blue and put some more blue into that grey goes up there and then fades off down here right I've made it a little bit fluffy so I'm just going to um, alter that and then like that there is some 
stray shadow and hair and it actually goes up a little bit here so I'm just pulling it up into the pale area and it's higher at the front here like that so going on to the top lip it's quite pale so using some of my flesh tone and making it slightly purple I can go in to get the angle of the lip and round and I'm very carefully looking at the line of the mouth because it goes slightly up and then it just goes flat straight across on the horizontal the colour's wrong so I'm going to go into my red and just put in a bit of a red line now I've made his top lip a little bit big but what will happen is I will bring the moustache down so it's paler in here right I've made it far too wide so I'm going to take some of my background green and chop so what I'm going to do is check the edge of the lip with where it is on the nostril on my picture and it is a little bit too far forward I think I've got it but it could be I need to drop the nose and bring the nostril forward a bit so I'll chop a little bit off to correct as you probably remember I didn't actually do any um, measuring out or any real drawing so this is what happens you draw as you go if you don't like that because it can be frustrating for some people who like to have the drawing done at the beginning then I would suggest drawing it all out bottom lip comes down there a bit more I'm wondering if my top lip is still a bit too high I think I need a bit more distance so I'm going to put in a little bit more moustache which goes down here I think it drops down there a bit more so I think this shape of the mouth will need a bit more thought a little bit of warm colour in this moustache and then you have a bit of shadow under here and the side here it comes in a little bit darker so the bottom lip needs adjusting and then you have this pale colour that comes down here and into the beard the beard is also a lot paler than what I've done it so I'll do something with that go over it it's a bit more subtle than what I've got it But I still have that dark bit there which I'm going to put in however the beard itself what I'm looking at doesn't really have much in the way of dark area over here and then the flesh color which is slightly blue gray comes down here and you've got quite a lot of gray going over here but I'm not going to worry about that right now I'm going to do that as I go slight hint of green under here and the dark colour comes into the neck like that so at this point I'm going to stop but I'm going to just do a little bit of quick blending to move things around because the paint's nice and thick now 
I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm just dragging areas around a little bit. That should be more rounded. I'm going to have to add a little bit of the red into that because I've just wiped it off. So a bit heavy handed there. Um, soften this a little bit. Pull that down a bit more. I'm not going to blend too much. Just a few little bits that I've seen need correcting. Pull some of this over here a bit. And actually, this is lighter. So I think my nose needs to change its position. Um, A little bit of dark red. And then what I'll do is I might redraw the end of the nose. That's a bit better. And his moustache. I've gone back into adjusting instead of blending. It needs to be lower. So that is it for this week. Um, next week I'm going to be working on the head more. I'll be painting the ear. I'll be looking at it in the week, making little adjustments um, to see if anything needs moving or tonal values are wrong. Um, and that's just and then see see what happens. I'll also be reassessing my colour if I need to make something a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler. So anyway, um, I hope you're getting on with your paintings and um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.